All right, we've got three positive charges. And they're in an equilateral triangle. Didn't quite draw that equilateral. Let's try that again. That's better. Okay, the force acting on each uh, of these, and I'm gonna draw it right here on the bottom right one. There's a force in this direction, and there's also a force in this direction with the angle being 60 degrees because it's an equilateral triangle. Each of these forces is K Q1 Q2 over R squared. Now we're told that Q1 equals Q2 2, which equals, I'm going to call it Q, which is 17 micro coulombs. Coulomb. Okay. Now, the side lengths, which I'm going to say is R, because they're all the distance away, which is R, is um, 15 centimeters. Okay. The magnitude and direction. Uh, okay, good. Of the net force in each particle. So that's what I drew. I, th I thought I was reading the question wrong. Um, okay, so each of these forces are equal. So, um, Using the Pythagorean theorem, uh, the net force, see, can I use the Pythagorean theorem here? Let me think about this. I'm going to add these two together. I've got one going this way, and I've got one going this way, and 60, if this is 60 up here, then this is going to be 120 degrees. So I'm trying to figure out this force down here. Let me think this through. That and that, with this being 120 degrees. Okay. So I can take the second force and change it in it into its components. Um, that's what I'm going to do. So in the x direction, now this is 60. In the x direction, I've got F plus. F cosine 60. And the cosine of 60 degrees is one half. So F plus half of F is just going to be three halves F. Now F sub Y is going to be F sine of 60 degrees, which is going to be the square root of 3 over 2 F, because the sine of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. Now I can use the Pyth Pythagorean theorem. The net force is going to be the square root of 3 halves F squared plus square, square root of 3 over 2 f 
squared. Okay, that's going to be the square root. The f can be factored out of 9 fourths plus 3 fourths, which would be f times the square root of 9 plus 3 is 12, so it's 12 fourths, which is 3. So it's going to be the square root of 3 times f. Okay, so let's just use a calculator here. The square root of 3 times f, but f is k, which is 9 times 10 to the ninth power times q1, 1 point, whoops. Ah, didn't want that, didn't want that. Okay, there we go, K, Q, which is what, 17 times 10 to the negative six power uh, squared because it's Q1 times Q2 and they're both the same, KQ squared over d squared or r squared 0 0.15 squared which gives me 200 newtons which is the correct answer there's three significant digits so i can write that as 200 Newtons. Now, the direction. We need the direction as well. If I call this angle right here phi, then phi will be the inverse tangent of f sub y over f sub x, which is going to be the inverse tangent. f sub y is square root of 3 over 2f. f of x is 3 over 2f. Cancel some things out here. 2, 2. So that's going to be the square root of 3 over 3. Drawing, drawing. Putting that into a calculator, although I feel like I should know this without a calculator. But oh well, I'm doing it anyway. Yeah, 30 degrees. That makes sense. Uh, I, I was thinking about saying that anyway, because thinking about a unit circle. Um, anyway, it's 30 degrees. And we got three significant digits, 30.0 degrees.